Good morning. Uh, this is Dan Cottle. I'm an associate consultant from IVIS. So I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to be going over shop floor control. Okay, so the overview. Uh, I'm going to do my quick introduction. And then uh, I'm going to go through what shop floor control is when it comes to AX. Um, and then I'm going to talk about how to set up a worker and go through some of the parameters in human resources, production, and then the specific manufacturing execution parameters and setup. And then I'm going to take you through a quick demonstration in AX uh, through what a worker would uh, carry out a production process with. So what is shop floor control? Shop, shop floor con control provides a way to track data on time and attendance, production orders and projects provides work centers for workers and supervisors to track work progress and allows you to post directly to production orders, projects, payroll, and etc. This is going to be where your shop floor workers are going to be doing their day-to-day uh, -day tracking of their time and attendance and their progress through their uh, orders. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is setting up a worker. Um, Human Resources has a lot of, a lot of settings for workers. Uh, I'm just going to be talking about the specifics with shop floor control. Uh, so first thing, they have to be activated and then they have to be checked off as a time registration worker so that time can be tracked against, the, against their work. Uh, they'll also track time per uh, order and what job they're doing. And then they need a badge ID or a password depending on your settings so that they can sign into the job registration uh, uh, user page. So some of the human resource parameters that uh, you might want to think about setting up um, and some that you have to set up. Um, first off, obviously the worker has to be active and they have to be a time employee. Uh, there's some settings involved um, with time employees that will be set up per company. Um, you can create absence codes. So if a worker is absent, they can put in a, uh, the supervisor can put in a code that will give a reason for why they were absent. Um, there is calculation and approval groups. for uh, Those are for grouping your workers. Uh, and then pay types and pay periods. And those are pretty standard human resource setups. Uh, some of the production parameters. Uh, a, 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 big, um, a big proponent of this is uh, whether you choose operation or job scheduling. Uh, they're a little bit different in the production process. Uh, there's some settings that are different, and uh, it also differs with how um, how thing how costs are recorded. Uh, so that's uh, specific to your company about whether you choose operation or job scheduling. Uh, allocation keys those can be set up for budgeting, uh, so you can budget this towards a um, a project or just in general um, a budget that you've uploaded. Um, setting up route groups so you can attach your workers as resources to those routes for production processes, uh, operation setup and cost groups. So the main setup for uh, shop floor control on the production side is in manufacturing execution and some of the parameters uh, that you have to set up are in there. Um, and Within the parameters for manufacturing execution, uh, there's a setup for job registration, uh, setup for projects and indirect activities. And then within the manufacturing execution, there's also more production parameters. And this has to do with the setup of how you want your production workflow to work, such as estimating uh, operations, releasing the production order, starting the production order, and then reporting is finished. So with that, I will go ahead and go into the demonstration. I think that's a little more useful than slides. I'm going to take through uh, new time registration worker creation. And then I'm actually going to go through a production order using the job registration screen as if I was a worker and show you how, how that worker would interact with that job uh, from release to complete and the clock in and clock out. And then I'm going to go to the shop floor supervisor role and show how that supervisor would go in at the end of the day and approve a worker's time.
Okay, so here I am in the human resources module, and I'm going to go in and create a new worker for my time registration. So I'm going to click on new and then hire a new worker. And then I'm just going to type in a name. I'm going to assign it to my current legal entity, but you'll be able to assign this to any of the legal entities, uh, given your permissions, obviously. Uh, this is a counting personnel number, so it's um, it's just the next number in line. I'm going to pick employee and then I'm just going to hire this new worker. Okay, so I'm going to go into this worker's profile. Sorry about that. And I'm going to update some of his information just so that I know he's a time registration worker. So I'm going to edit some of his information. And what I want to do is activate him for time registration. And I'm going to have to fill in some fields. So I want to put this for today's date. And then I'm going to put him in the manufacturing groups whenever they apply. These little red lines mean that they're required fields. And then I have to click this checkbox, use time card. Click OK. Okay, so now this worker is activated, but I still need to fill in a couple more things. So under employment and then time registration, I want to give him badge ID. I'd like to keep that the same as his worker ID, which was 545. And that'll be what he uses to log in uh, to his job registration. And then I've, I've already got the checkbox for use time card. So this worker is good to go for time registration. Obviously, there's a lot more things you'd want to fill in with an employee, but just for shop floor control, those are the things that you need. Okay, so from here, I'm going to move over to the production side, and I'm going to take you through a production order. So I'm going to go into production control, all production orders. I'm going to create a new production order. I'm going to use that item. I'm going to put in a quantity of 12, just so I know which one I'm looking at. So now I've created this production order. It's uh, down here on the list page. And what I want to do first is estimate. Estimating is going to estimate the costs and estimate the um, resources for this production order. It's a pretty simple step. And then I want to come over here and schedule jobs. That'll actually get these jobs up on the, uh, the job list, but it won't release the job list so that the employees can go into their workstations until I hit this release button right here. This is just the second step in the production order process. So I'm going to release this. Now from here, if you weren't using shop floor control, you could run through the whole production process from here. But since we're using that, I'm going to go as if I was a worker and go into the job registration. So for the, this job registration, it'll first uh, bring up a list of resources. I have the, the whole list. What I want to do is look for a specific one for a specific job. 
So I'm going to pick on this 110. And then this 1121, this, is, this resource is actually a worker. And this worker has the first step in the process of this production order. Their job is cabinet, cabinet assembly. Um, so I'm going to enter in this worker number. And I apologize for this info log. That's a bug just on this uh, image that I'm using. It still works. So right here you can see these, this is the list of this worker's uh, jobs. So this one down here, this 12, is the production order that I just created. There's a couple other ones in here. He's got some work to do. So what you can do from this screen is run through the whole process. He can, pass, he can complete this job. He can clock in, clock out, uh, report that there's something wrong and stop the, uh, the job. And he can also complete it, which passes on to the next part in the uh, production process. So I'm just going to kind of simulate what this person would go through. Up here in the, uh, the action pane is going to be all his list of, uh, of options that, to push the, the job forward. So I'm going to hit start job. And this will automatically clock this worker in. Now later on, it's, the system is going to notice that he hasn't been working since 7 a.m. And I will show where that error comes in. So right now it shows that he's clocked in and it'll start recording time on him. Now I can click on this job and as you can see these fields that were grayed out before are, are now usable. So I can say whether this job was completed. I can stop it if something is wrong. I can put in progress if it's taking a long time but not necessarily the only thing that he's working on. And then there's a, a feedback button uh, that won't have anything on it at this point. Uh, I can also have him just clock out and uh, that'll move the job to in progress automatically. And there's also an option to take a break over here. Uh, with this company right now, we have a setup where there's two types of breaks. There's just a break from work and then there's a break for lunch. Uh, obviously you can put in more breaks, more reasons for breaks, that kind of thing. Um, and then on this, uh, on this second tab, this is where the worker can look up information on the job that they're performing. They can go straight to the production order, uh, track it on the project, look at their current activities, uh, bring up their selected job, that kind of thing. They can also look at the materials for this job. I'm just going to go ahead and complete this job. And this brings up the uh, report feedback. This is where this worker is going to enter in his good or error quantity or scrap quantity. Let's say that he did a good job. And then he can also come in here and change the status. Maybe he wants to say that the job is still in progress. Maybe there were some error ones. I'm going to go ahead and just put completed. Now when the screen comes back up, that job that he had is off his list, moved to completed, and it'll be on to the, the next person. Now kind of an interesting thing about this job registration page is it, it says that there's a, a way to close the page, but since he's logged in, uh, it, it doesn't actually allow that to work. The way to get out of this screen without fully shutting it down is uh, control Q. And that'll bring me back to the main page. So I'm just going to go to the next process to show, oh, one more thing. Uh, on the selecting resources, if you select a resource and it doesn't have any jobs, there's a warning at the bottom that just says you're about to click on a resource that has no jobs. Kind of just gives you a warning that there's no real reason to click on it. So this was the, uh, the second uh, job in the bill of materials for this production order. I'm just going to show that this has now been moved into his job list.
and he's got a much longer job list. So now he has this 12 down here that he needs to clock in and complete this job. So that's the, the basics of what a worker would do, registering, going into job registration and going through their list of jobs and reporting on them. All of this is tracked and I will now show you how the production supervisor can go in and approve these. I hit control Q. So now I have to go back to the human resources module. And from here I go into time and attendance and approve. And I'm going to choose today's date. Okay, so now we have our whole list of workers, a long list of them, and this first one, 499, is the one where I completed that job. Down here in the overview it shows that he clocked in at 11.11 and that he completed this process. So what I can do is try to approve that. This is actually going to come up with an error because this person hasn't been working all day. They've only worked two minutes. So I'm going to click approve and I'll get this error. See it says zero approved without error. So I've got this absence in here and I need to go to this absence and pick out a reference and reason for it. I'm going to say that he was on vacation. So now I've got this vacation group, it'll track that he was on vacation for that time of the day where he wasn't working. And now I can try to update and approve this. Uh, well, it said, it, it did approve it. <laughs> The, the checkbox over here, the green checkbox, says that there was no error. So everything that this person did today uh, was, was cleared. And then there's this indirect activity. That's going to bring from the end of this process down to the end of the day. Um, that's just a setting that you can have where any time that's, uh, that's not filled in, it'll just automatically say that there's some waiting job. And you can track the cost for that as well. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to show today. Uh, it's a very basic overview of shop floor control. Yeah, thank you very much.